What's up everyone, my name is Tatsai Gots and I will be doing a beginner's guide to the ADC roll and smite. Let's begin with the basics. So first, um, I just want to talk about some general facts. ADCs usually have lane clear, an escape or form of it, and a strong light game. Let's take on her for example. His lane clear is called impale, which does damage to all enemies in a line. And his main escape will be called Dispersed, and basically he leaps to a target location. Next is called Shifting Sands, and he can use this for an escape too, because it slows enemies by up to 35%. Um, so now we'll ask, who can be an ADC? Usually you'll see ADCs being Hunters, that is, these guys right here. But also you could see some mages like... Um, Kronos and Poseidon because they rely on their auto attacks to do a lot of damage, especially late game. So where do ADCs go? ADCs go in the long lane, which can be found if you're on the order side, on the left side, and if you're on the chaos side, the right side. <clears throat> when you're calling lanes, when you're calling rolls, do not say I'm going left or I'm going right you gotta say ADC this is because you don't know which side you're on whether it's the order side or the chaos side so it'll cause confusion and it's much better if you just call ADC which is the role you're looking for anyways so let's talk about some pros and cons some pros is they have really high damage, but and uh, it's also like, honestly, in my opinion, it is the most fun role to play, because after a while you just get to two hit people because you have crit. Um, some cons, you're always the priority first target in a team fight, and oftentimes it could be difficult to land skill shots as a new player per se. Um, some good starter ADCs it would be Neath and on her. Neath would be the go-to hunter for easiness because she's one, free, two, her abilities are really easy and um, she's just a really simple god. Um, and the second one on her, he puts he outputs a lot of damage. Like every single one of his um, abilities kind of either does damage or modifies it. So here we see the Shifting Sands actually gives you a damage buff of up to 20% for your auto attacks. Your Impale does up to 350 damage plus 80% of your physical power. And Disperse does up to 210 damage with 60% of your physical power. So let's just jump into um, jungle practice right now. And let's play on her. So basically, right now I'm going to be showing you a standard build and what I call the Heartseeker build, which is starting to become a little more, um, more favored, I suppose. A lot of the pros use it, so... Generally, you want to start out with Bluestone Pendant because it gives you plus 15 physical power, 90 health, and 5 MP5. Uh, the passive is also restores 3% of your missing mana every 5 seconds. Now, this will help you stay in lane as long as possible so that you could get money to buy um, the full item of Devourer's Gauntlets because when you start out, you'll only be able to buy this stuff one bluestone pendant, a spike gauntlet, and a healing potion. So by the time uh, you want to go back to base, you'll want to have 1400 gold. So the full build for an ADC will look something like this. More fury for my spear. That is Devourer's Gauntlets, Ninja Tabby, Ikaval, The Executioner, Rage, 
and Deathbringer. Now this is like the most standard ADC build. You can modify it if you want. I find that this is the one that works really well. But it is quite a, an expensive build. Um, some people like to trade out Deathbringer, which is 3,000 gold, with uh, Titan's Bane, which is a very cheap 2,050 gold. Um, the reason being for that is this gives you phys a lot of physical power, not as much as Deathbringer, but it also gives you the penetration. But this gives you the critical strike chance, and that is huge. So let me give you a rundown of each item. <clears throat> So we look at phys Devourer's Gauntlets. Now what this does is it gives you plus 25 phys physical power and plus 10% physical lifesteal flat. However, this is a stacking item that goes up to 75 stacks. Um, you permanently gain plus 4 physical power and plus 0.20% plus 20 physical lifesteal per second per stack and receive 5 stacks per god kill and 1 stack per minion. So what this means is when you're low on health and you're attacking someone, you will gain a portion of the damage that you dealt as health back. This is important for hunters because they want to stay alive as long as possible because they have a little bit of a short health pool, but uh, that is remedied by Devourer's Gauntlets. Second, um... This, is, this will be Ninja Tabby. These are the boots that you usually want to go when you want to be uh, kind of auto attack centered. If you want to be like ability powered like uh, hunters like Hu Yi, I would suggest going Warrior Tabby. Um, so this one gives you plus 20 physical power, plus 15% attack speed, and plus 18% move, movement speed. Every boot gives you... Um, plus 18% movement speed, but this one is unique in the fact that it gives you plus 15% attack speed. Warrior's Tabby will just give you plus 40% physical power, so as you can see, um, you'll want to use this if you're a hard hitter like Hu Yi. Next is Ikavul. Uh, once you get Ikavul on, it is actually one of the best uh, early game items for how cheap it is. It is about 1700 gold, I believe. Um, it gives you plus 30% attack speed, plus 10 physical pe penetration, and every successful basic attack increases your physical power by 10 and reduces your target's physical power from items by 10 for 3 seconds, max 3 stacks. So basically, you're getting 30 physical power, right? Um, when you're dueling with someone, if you can hit more than him, uh, this is like the best item because it just gives you such a huge power spike if he if your enemy does not have this up then you're stealing fit 30 then you're stealing 30 physical power from his items so let's say he has ninja tabby and devourer's gauntlets up but he doesn't have ikabul up what this does is it basically negates all of ninja tabby's physical power that it gives and a portion of Devourer's Gauntlets. So that is huge, especially when you're trying to uh, box another hunter. And boxing basically means fight 1v1. <laughs> Next up is the Executioner. This is um, gives you plus 30 physical power, plus 25% attack speed, and basic attacks against an enemy reduce your target's physical protection by 6 and additional 8% for 3 seconds. So basically, it is kind of like on her's passive. On her spear's attacks, spear attacks reduce the enemy target's physical protection for three seconds. As you can see, it's kind of the same thing, but it stacks up together. So then you have a com combination of fif fifteen. This negates fifteen, and this negates. 18 plus an additional 8%. So that stacks up together, you are doing massive damage, especially as on her. Next, we're getting into our crit. <clears throat> so this gives you plus 30% crit, plus 30 physical power, and basically it gives you more chance to um, get a critical hit because you only have 30% critical strike chance, right? But every time you don't crit, basically it gives you a stack, and then 
it'll increase the chances of having a critical strike chance by 10% with a max of 5 stacks. So basically, um, sometimes you won't always hit it because you have 30%, right? You'll only have 30% by this time. And uh, the more you hit without a crit, it'll go up to 80% percent chance of getting a crit critical hit. So Next up is the Deathbringer. So it gives you 50 physical power plus 20% critical strike chance. And the passive is critical strike damage is increased by 50%. So sometimes you'll see Deathbringer be brought out before Rage. And that's because of the massive amounts of damage it does. Um, it'll go up to like 700 damage even. It is just absolutely crazy if I could get a crit here. That would be great. So as you can see there, I just literally two-shotted this raw because I had a massive crit of uh, 526. My auto attacks do regularly like 100 damage, and then all of a sudden 500 damage comes out of nowhere. So on ADCs are amazing fun, you know, and like it's my favorite role. I, I love playing it, and um, yeah. So let's talk about actives for a second. <clears throat> the go-to active is definitely greater sprint, unless you have um, a, a different item, of course. So using this item increases your ground speed by 40% for 6 seconds. It also makes your immune, you immune to slows for the duration, and you no longer have the movement penalty while firing. So basically what this means is, when I shoot, I go slower, right? I think it's a 35% debuff. When I use my sprint, I no longer have that slow. So then I could just keep going at 40% faster and using my auto attacks without even slowing down. So that is huge because you can just follow your target without slowing down. Honestly, I like picking greater sprint up right after I finish the executioner to be able to uh, gas pedal my opponents so that I could really kill them as fast as I can. And finally, beads. Um, what beads does is uh, it removes crowd control effects and makes you immune to new ones for three seconds. So this is huge in a um, in a team fight scenario. Uh, sure, you ha you'll have your greater sprint up, but if you get CC'd long for a long time, like there are CC chains, mesmerizes, stuns, knockups. Um, this is only for six seconds. So let's say they have <clears throat> huge amounts of CC on their team. It goes past six seconds. You just wasted your greater sprint because you don't have beads. So what beads does is basically allows you to do what you want. Um, the only downside is that its cooldown is 90 seconds. As well, um, at full max rank, it reduces all god cooldowns by three seconds. So let's go here. I'm going to use my impale on raw. So there's a 10 second cooldown. Boom. Now it's down to 3 seconds. Really useful. I would definitely suggest getting greater purification, especially if your team is not doing so well. It'll help you out for sure. So let's talk about um, the secondary build that I was talking about earlier. <clears throat> and that will be slightly different it's not that different but um, this is definitely a build uh, you should try but you should try it with extreme caution um, as one of the items is um, really difficult for a starter um, player I would definitely suggest it if you're coming um, to the ADC role as kind of experienced especially if you're an assassin or a mage or something like that um, that uses Doom Orb or the same item Heartseeker. So let's talk about Heart Heartseeker for a bit. Um, off the bat you get 30% physical power and plus 8% movement speed. Now what you might be thinking is 
why do I need movement speed as a hunter um, when I need lifesteal for my first item? Um, basically, you gain plus one physical power per stack, you receive two stacks for a god kill and one stack for a minion kill. The stacks are halved on death. Now that is a major because basically if you're dying a lot, then this the value of this item just goes right off the table. Um, I would not take this item on a super vu vulnerable um, hunter like a like Amuzin Cab, per se. So you gain plus one physical power per stack. That's up to 50, 50 physical power. So that's huge, but it gets halved on death. So that's that's a downside. Um, and you gain movement speed. So basically, you won't need uh, boots second item. So then we pick up Aussie, which is another um, cheap item. So right now you can see this is just a cheap, cheap build. Um, take a look at Aussie. It's 1780 compared to the Ikeval, which was 1700. So you lose 80 gold. However, let's take a look at Heartseeker. Now Heartseeker is 1790. So basically, it's the same price for the f tier 1 item. So let's go ahead and take that. But this one is 1140 for the full item. Let's take a look at Devourer's Gauntlets. It's 1400. So basically, this is a cheaper build and potentially gives you much more physical power much earlier because this only stacks 50 this will stack up to 75 which will take 25 more minions and we're all about efficiency in the adc lane you know always getting ahead of your lane partner and what this enables you to do since this isn't really auto attack focused because the other build is auto attack focused so you can get use your devour gauntlet passive which is the physical lifesteal you know so since it's not auto attack um oriented you're opted into Warrior Tabby. So what this does is makes every single one of your hits way harder by uh, 20 physical power. And 20 physical power is a big deal. Um, I would suggest this build on someone like Neath, someone like on her, who can actually use the physical power really well and still be somewhat safe. Um, the only problem with on her, like, the only reason why I like this build on Neath is because she has a direct heal in, in her kit. Um, next, we have the standard executioner for the increased uh, auto attack speed, rage for the crit, and deathbringer for the crit. So, I mean, it's a good build to try. I would definitely try it. Um, at least once or twice to see which one you like better but um, personally I like the Devourer's Gauntlets build because um, it's just much more safer and more reliable I mean once you die you lose if you have 50 stacks then like if you have 50 stacks then it's just right back down to 25 and then you have to kill 25 minions again whereas late game um, the Devourer Gauntlet ADC player that you're playing against will have his full 75 stacks, so then you're automatically at a disadvantage unless you get 25 minion kills. Um, so at that point, it's just kind of useless, and um, especially in casuals and um, not so much ranked, but definitely casuals, people don't really look out for you. Um, in ranked, you could kind of ask uh, the enemy or your teammates to gank your lane so that um, you know you're kind of at the same with the other guy. But um, if they have Devour's Gauntlets, then you're just automatically at a disadvantage. So, I mean, you gotta kind of experiment with it, but. In terms of safeness, and uh, if you're, especially if you're new, I, w I wouldn't take this build. I would just stick with the good old Devourer Gauntlet and Ikeval. Um, yeah, that's it from me. Uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please drop a like, favorite, and subscribe for more Smite.